Hello and welcome to this video and this video is going to be called The Greatest Drummer of All Time? Question mark. Right, I'm never comfortable about talking about who's the greatest. You, you, you know really I don't believe there's such a thing. Um, but of course, a title like that gets you all clicking. So anybody about to put a comment saying so there's no such thing as the greatest then you did click on the video to watch it so or you just clicked on it to uh, um, put that comment in whichever way it is yes let's let us take it you know for granted that it's a bit of a silly statement but these statements can create very very interesting composition um, conversations not compositions um, is this a composition I don't know interesting conversations um, which can give us a greater understanding of music. And when we have a greater understanding of music, we have a greater understanding of life. So it's a pretty important thing to do, I think. So who is the greatest drummer of all time? Now recently, I did a video called The Greatest Guitarist of All Time. But on that video, I had an idea of who that guitarist was. When I started the video, I'd worked out what I was gonna say. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time. Uh, it's the obvious one for me to do. Um, but I, I haven't been able to come up with who the greatest drummer is of all time. So I thought what I'd do as an experiment is I'm going to switch the camera on. And if you're watching this, the experiment worked. If you're not watching it, then it didn't work. But you won't know that. Um, and I'm basically going to try on camera to talk my way through to an answer. Right? So if you want to watch that happen, get yourself a cup of tea and sit back and watch the next 20 minutes where I try and work out who the greatest of drummer is of all time. So what criteria do I use to work out these great things? Well, there's a number of um, um, factors that I try and balance all together. Now the first one is the subjective um, factor, which is who I like, right? This isn't my favorite drummer, but that's gonna be an influence. So everybody will have their greatest drummer of all time because that's a factor, but it's not the only factor. There's also more objective factors that we can take into consideration. But let's park that first one. First factor is, who do I like? The second factor would be popularity. Who does everyone else like? You know, who's the most famous drummer of all time? All right, and that then sort of opens up a third factor is, is did this drummer change culture? Not just music, but cha change culture. This, did this Drummer change what people do, what they wear, how they thought. Did, did they enter into the, the, the consciousness of our culture? Um, another factor would be technical ability. How skillful are they? Right? That's, that's not an overriding factor, but it's something we could consider when we're trying to think of the greatest. Okay? Who um, was an innovator? This one is always has a little bit more importance, you know. Did this person create new things? Okay? So what I try and do when I come up with the greatest is try and come up with someone that has hit, scored really high, hit really high on all those levels, those four or five levels. So let's, um, let's start with um, drummers I really like. So who are my favorite drummers? My favorite drummer, as I've said on this channel, is, is Narada Michael Walden. It would be Billy Cobham, Terry Bozio, Vinnie Colliuto, Steve Gadd. I've just come up with five drummers that I absolutely love off the top of my head at this moment in time. Um, and they're the drummers that I really love. You know, is one of those going to become the greatest drummers of all time? Well, we could go through them. You know, who is the most innovative uh, out of those drummers I just mentioned? Well, I would have to say it's probably Billy Cobham. Billy Cobham almost creates jazz fusion drumming. Billy Cobham is a pioneer of double bass drumming. Billy Cobham's a pioneer of, of, of technical drumming, you know. So he scores very, they all score incredibly highly on the technique, but Cobham's got the technique as well. He's a personal favorite. Is it Billy Cobham? You know, I'm gonna park that, it, you know. It, the, it could, is, is Billy Cobham the greatest drummer of all time? Let's park it, Let, let's, you know. Let's, now let's come at it from another angle. Popularity. Who are the most popular drummers? If you walk down the street and ask people who they know, they would say probably Ringo Starr. They might say um, Keith Moon, Phil Collins, perhaps um, John Bonham. You know, these are the drummers that the, the general public are going to be, uh, you know, aware of. Now, 
There's an innovator. All all of those drummers somewhat are innovators. I I I would say John Bonham's a, a pretty heavy innovator in terms of you know developing rock drumming. You know he's he's become the sort of beacon of rock drumming, and he's a he's he's a, of those who did I just say Ringo, Keith Mill, Phil Collins is an incredible technician, uh, as is Bonham. So Bonham, but Bonham probably innovated more than than. Um, but Phil Collins has had a huge influence on culture. So now we've got Phil Collins in the mix and we've got is it Phil Collins gonna come out? Oh, I would love that. If Phil Collins came up and my greatest drummer of all time. He's a fantastic drummer. But Bonham, you know, Bonham's huge influence on culture, massively popular, is an innovator, and I love him. So that that John Bonham. So now we've got Billy Cobb and we've got John Bonham. Let's move on to innovation. Right, now we now we this becomes totally changes the game. Okay? The drums are basically their collection of instruments. Some genius back at the turn of the last century decided to try and play a snare drum and a bass drum at the same time. Is that the greatest drummer of our time? We wouldn't have drumming. We would not have a drum kit if that unknown person hadn't decided to do that. Some drummer possibly, well possibly was a drummer, invented in 1909 the bass drum pedal, which was designed on contraptions that were people. Is that, is that the person, you know? Um, the uh, I can't remember his name. The drummer of the original Dixieland jazz band. I should know his name. It's an Italian name. Can't remember. That guy. That's the first recorded jazz drums, right? That's where drumming. So because drumming, you know, drumming is jazz drumming. All the drum styles <laughs> that have emerged in the 20th century started off in jazz, right? So is that guy important? What about Baby Dodds? You know. What about the person that really pioneered hi-hat playing, Joe Jones? Now, Joe Jones, who was a drummer with the Count Basie band, he really moved time from the snare drum, the way it was, which is sort of military drumming, he moved time onto the hi-hats and he basically invented hi-hat playing, he invented the sort of modern swing, and he was part of the first proper rhythm section in the Count Basie band. Uh, they were incredibly popular, and Joe Jones um, was an incredible technician as well, and an absolute beautiful drummer. If you want to see artistry on the drum kit, go and check a Joe Jones drum solo out. Joe Jones! Is it him? Is Joe Jones the greatest drummer of all time? But of course, Joe Jones is, is amongst a number of jazz drummers in the 20s and 30s that are pioneering all sorts of things. Um, now, there's one drummer when I did think of doing this list, it popped into my head and it surprised me. And it's another drummer that emerged in the 1930s. It was Gene Krupa. Now, Gene Krupa was a drummer with the Benny Goodman band, but he was also very, very charismatic. So he, he not only becomes the first um, superstar drummer, there's a strong argument that Gene Krupa is almost like the first pop star. His, his, his influence on culture was absolutely huge. Um, because he was so popular, he really, the, the way he played, which was, was um, a, a bad ab adaptation of Mahler technique. So those of you who aren't drummers, the main technique on the drums, um, the, which I think is the sort of mother of techniques, it's, it's the fundamental technique of how you play drums, which is Mahler technique, was, in, it was not created, it was identified by a teacher in the 1920s, 1930s called Sanford Mahler. Now Sanford Mollick is a, is a very important drummer. You know he also built drums as well, and he um, he created a technique which was used by many drummers, including um, Gene Krupa. Now Gene Krupa actually he took on Mollick's technique. I, I don't think he did it correctly. There's a there's a, a story that um, when Mollick first developed Mollick technique. He, um, he got it wrong. He, he put some adap adaptations in himself, which was basically playing with the elbows out, and he realised the elbows shouldn't be out, and a few other things like that. And um, Gene Krupa played in that way. When, when Moller realised what he'd done, he, he, he sort of went and said, can I call all the books back in? I want to make an adaptation. That, but I think it was Ludwig who would publish the book, and it was selling so well, and said no. And so uh, a true Moller technique has become quite an esoteric um, knowledge that you have to try and seek out through people in the know. Mainly people who come in contact with Jim Chapin who was another student of Mahler. But you know, um, but Mahler technique, which is the basic way of playing, 
that was popularised immensely by uh, Gene Krupa. And because Gene Krupa was such a superstar, he was in films. So many drummers would have seen um, Mola Technique. He would, they would have seen and, and Krupa was a technically very, very good drummer. Uh, Krupa also, um, back in the 1930s, there was a lot of different kit setups. If you look at the kit that um, Gene Krupa's playing in the 1930s, it's pretty much the same as the kits we play now. So he really popularised popularized the, um, the drum kit, the standard drum kit that we play today with the tom, with that tuning system, with that setup of cymbals, the hi hat and snare drum. So um, from Joe Jones, moving to Krupa, Krupa ticks a lot of these boxes. Is Gene Krupa the most important drummer in history? Now, I know who you're shouting at me at the moment. You're shouting Buddy Rich. Buddy Rich is an incredible technician. Um, I don't think he's as much of an innovator as people think. Um, um, he was immensely popular. He doesn't impinge on culture. There's a strong argument for Buddy Rich being in there. The only reason why I wouldn't put Buddy in, he is not an innovator in the same way that Joe Jones is an innovator, or Kenny Clark, or Max Roach is an innovator. Now there's two drummers now. You know, Kenny Clark invents bebop drumming. You know, Kenny Clark takes that um, ride pattern that Joe Jones has created on the hi hat and he moves it to the ride cymbal. Right, and up until then, jazz drummers are basically holding down backbeat with a four to the floor bass drum. But because of what's going on in bebop, he tries to mirror what the melody and the phrasing of bebop, he tries to mirror that between the left hand and the bass drum. So you, he's keeping swing here, and then go between the um, bass drum and the snare drum. Um, that's immensely important. Because if you listen to rock drumming, rock drumming is a dance between the snare drum and bass drum. Bom, you know, so drummers in the 50s who were bebop trained that start playing on rock and roll records, they start to straighten out that beat. Drummers like Earl Palmer, for example. Now, Earl Palmer, how important is that guy? Well, on a million hit records, you know, people like John Bonham it really lifted so much from drummers like that. Um, so, as you see, as we are, we are going through this, we could see there's so many people. You know, let's let's move on to mainstream success. You know, let's let's talk about Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr, go and check my video out on Ringo. I think he's a really really important drummer. Technically, a lot better than people think, um, but so innovative. You know, because the Beatles were so successful, the beats that Ringo played and his approach became all encompassing. So many drummers were listening to Ringo. Um, I was chatting to a friend of mine who. Um, played with John Bonham and of course we're not too sure who John Bonham's influences were you know and you know I say you know he listened to a lot of Earl Palmer didn't he and he listened to a lot of jazz guys and you know, did he listen to Bernard Purdy and, and this guy turned around and said yeah but he also listened to a ton of Ringo because everybody did so Bonham's playing is is mostly coming out of the rock drumming aesthetic of Ringo Starr when Ringo went to the America with the Beatles and he appeared on the Ed Sullivan show he launched a thousand drummers fusion drummers rock drummers metal drummers all through my life I've been meeting legendary drummers of a certain age that have told me that they started drumming because they saw Ringo is it Ringo right is it Ringo Starr um, another drummer that I know people would would want me to mention is Neil Peart Neil Peart Fantastic technician, um, not an innovator like a Bill Bruford in terms of progressive rock drumming, not an in innovator like a Ginger Baker. Then Ginger Baker, there's another one. I'm like, how many are we going to consider on this? I'm getting nowhere. You know, I want this video tied up in 20 minutes. We've got five minutes to go. Uh, and I've got a lot of contenders, but now I'm throwing other ones in the mix. I know you want me to talk about Neil Peart, you know. And, and Neil Peart's importance is the fact that if you are... are a, a a young drummer learning the instrument and you listen to rock and roll and you listen to rock music you listen to Led Zeppelin impressed by John Bonham you listen to Dave Grohl Dave Grohl don't even mention Dave Grohl <laughs> you listen to all these rock drummers and then suddenly you go check out Rush this is another rock band that's huge and then you suddenly hear Neil Peart Neil Peart's drumming especially if you're young uh, is is mind-blowing 
because he's doing so many things that you have never heard before, playing in odd times, rolls around the kit, playing a large kit, double bass drumming to some extent, uh, complexity. And, and Neil Pert is, is, I believe, is the gateway to great drumming. Is he on the same level as a Billy Cobham? Is he on the same level as a Vinnie Cobham? Of course he's not. You know, sorry for Rush fans, but he's nowhere near that technical ability. Um, but he, he is the doorway to that. His drumming, however, is absolutely beautiful. His aesthetic um, is incredible. The drumming on moving pictures is absolutely wonderful. This is often what makes drummers truly great. He's a, someone who can play for the song. And, and Pert can play for the song in Rush. He's the best drummer that Rush could have ever had. He was the, the, the goat for Rush. Right? Um, but if we put on Pink Floyd and we listen to Nick Mason, his drumming's beautiful in Pink Floyd. Now, Nick Mason isn't really a technician like a Billy Cobham or Vinnie Colaiuta. Um, but what he does in Pink Floyd is absolutely beautiful. What Phil Rudd does in ACDC is absolutely beautiful. And all these drummers are immensely popular and there's a reason why they're immensely popular. I had an argument the other day about um, Larry Mullen from U2. Larry Mullen, I think, is a fantastic drummer who has created incredible signature drum parts. I could play drum parts off U2 al albums now and you'd know who they are. Uh, with a great feel and, and a great aesthetic, you know. Uh, we even can go down to the White Stripes, Meg White, I think incredible drumming, fantastic signature drumming, where she's she's taken her limitations, which which are um, far less great than people make out. She's, she's, I think she's a much more accomplished drummer than, than she makes out because her timing and sound is so good. Uh, but to be able to create really creative, innovative parts with that skill set. So on this video, I've run the gamut of all these drummers. So who is the greatest drummer of all time? <laughs> I am, uh, after talking through it, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this. I think it's Buddy Rich. I really do. I was going to say Gene Krupa. It's between Gene Krupa and Buddy Rich. Both fantastic technicians, both innovative, innovative on their instruments, and more importantly because they were so successful, so many people took from those drummers. Um, immensely popular, acknowledging culture. Um, Krupa has played on more important recordings because of his work in the Benny Goodman band than perhaps Buddy Rich. I never felt Buddy Rich really has ever played on a kind of blue or a Love Supreme or Led Zepp 4 or, or a, a Nevermind. He's never done anything like that. But he's played on some pretty heavyweight records nonetheless. Um, I think there's a perception about Buddy Rich and that perception comes from, for a drummer of that era, late 30s, early 40s, we could still put on one of his videos and we can all be astonished. He is insane. It's like um, there's something about the way he plays that has to be factored in. There's a, there is a plethora of incredible technical drummers. I sometimes don't know how to get my head around it when I put YouTube on. And see the amount of incredible technicians but do any of them really have that touch that that buddy had on the drum kit that sound and of course his influence on drummers you know if you talk about john bonham there's a ton of buddy rich I, I believe that john bonham tuned his kit to sound like buddy rich and john bonham bonham's massive importance in this comes from his drum sound it comes from when the levee breaks so Maybe subconsciously, I answered the question before I started because I genuinely didn't know who I was going to say is the greatest of all time. But before I did, I thought I'd better put an album in the background, you know, because I always have an album, not always, but I usually have an album in the background which has some sort of subconscious comment on my videos, you know. And I pulled out a Buddy Rich album, Superstar. Now, that album behind is one of the great fusion albums of all time. I absolutely love that album. That's my favourite. Uh, Buddy Rich album. It's also called A Different Drummer. I've got a funny copy back there. 
So, we're at the end of the video. So you want to know who I think the greatest drummer of all time is? I didn't think I was going to say this. I have argued against this when other people have said it. But I'm going to say Buddy Rich was the greatest drummer of all time. All right? And I, you know what I think is stopping me from doing that is one little factor. It is the fact that I am not a massive fan of Buddy Rich. If I was to put all my favourite drummers, he'd be quite low on the list. I, I, I like Buddy Rich. My dad was a big Buddy Rich fan. I listened for Buddy Rich from the, the uh, dot. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I went searching for my drummers, my Buddy Rich, to, to, to challenge my dad, and mine was Billy Cobb and Nerada Michael Walton. But I'm going to give it to Buddy Rich because that's how important he is. He's, he, this, is this is the guy that if you say greatest of all time, this is the one you're going to have to get past, isn't it? So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like this sort of stream of consciousness, don't know where I'm going, don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the discussion. And uh, if you did, please like the video. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And if you want to support me in you know, me waffling on without a clue in my head, if you want to support me in that um, task, then please click the link below and join my Patreon. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.